Welcome to Fatherhood for the Rest of Us with Brandon Handley. Because you're already great at everything else, why not fatherhood too? Welcome to Fatherhood for the Rest of Us. This is Brandon Handley. I am the creator and founder of Fatherhood for the Rest of Us. We are running up on, I guess, about six months now or so, give or take, maybe seven. Man, time certainly does fly when you've just got so much of yourself invested in what it is that you're doing and loving. And I'm loving fatherhood. I really am. And I'm loving doing this podcast and participating and interacting with you, uh, interacting with the guests, and just plain doing it, doing doing this podcast. Today, I have a special guest. Everybody's special, of course, uh, on this one. Uh, he's dear to me. Just do the conversation and the experience that we were able to share during our conversation. Joel Kessel, he is uh, he's a you know he's a PR guy, uh, but he's he's you know not just any PR guy. He's been doing this uh, business for himself uh, for about seventeen years. He's been in the business itself for about twenty five. He's a classy, classy guy, and really what he's working on is working with other people who are trying to do meaningful work in a meaningful way. And he's trying to get them to, he's trying to help them, well he is helping them, to share their story in uh, a manner that really helps uh, the other person, the other group, get their message across clearly and concisely so that so that they're able to promote themselves in the light that, they truly, that, they, that they're truly trying to be seen in. Uh, aside from that, Joel is uh, an amazing father, and you can listen in on this podcast and see why he is working from home now, uh, why he's decided to move his office from an office location and into his home, um, and and also another another really cool point, or just a nice section about Joel's that he's got uh, he's got one child biologically, and he's got another one that's adopted, and we talk a little bit through that. Um, Really, again, he uh, he's done a lot of amazing work historically. Uh, I know he's going to continue to do a lot of amazing work. He shares, uh, you know, kind of his philosophy on who he works with and why he's working with certain people. And you're going to find all that in 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 this podcast. And I, I know that I hope that you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed uh, talking with him. Uh, Please, without any, uh, you know, uh, make sure that if you're enjoying this podcast, that you run on over to iTunes, leave a rating review, and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of these episodes. And that's going to help this podcast raise itself in the rankings and be found by others who are enjoying the podcast just like you are. And uh, other than that, you know, find us over at the private Facebook group, Fatherhood for the Rest of Us, if you would like to. You know, share some of your fatherhood challenges, uh, sh- share some things that you're celebrating, anything that you're willing to share about fatherhood that can help other fathers grow. I, I, I would love to have you over there so that you can be a member of the community because that's what it's all about is other fathers helping each other out and learning and growing as we get through this thing called fatherhood. All right, guys, enjoy this podcast. Record so I didn't, I forgot like a week or two ago. I was doing one. I was like, oh my gosh. It's like a night. the worst. Yeah, it, it really, it, it really was bad. I, I didn't, you know, I think I'd gotten about 15 minutes into it and uh, <laughs> I looked over. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't see the red button doing what it's supposed to be doing. And Right. Well, but you know, hey man, um, it's a one man show. You do what you can do. That's right. I hear you. All right. I hear you. Well, hey, look, first of all, before we get going, man, I want to say thanks. I appreciate you taking your time. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Even though you've heard my podcast, you still decided to get on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I, uh, we're here to help each other, right? Uh, awesome, man. Awesome. You, really you got to start somewhere and uh, just grow into it, man. So it's, it's good, good content. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, do, we definitely do our best here. Do our best. Um, so, I mean, I'll go ahead and get it started. I don't know what your evening's looking like, but I know that my kids are out for a little bit, but when they come back, they'll be, they'll be hellions. So, yeah, my, my kids are out there. They're told, to, you know, dad's on an important call. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if that sinks in. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. So, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. I'll read off your bio, uh, the, just the, um, your, your initial, um, the top level there, and we'll just kind of kick it around and see where it goes. Um, yeah, that's cool. 
uh, like I said, I think before, like, you know, just kind of talk about what it is that you're doing out there, what you're offering, like in your business and, and flip it over uh, into uh, fatherhood and, and being a dad a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So, um, so I'll go ahead and I'll start here in five, four, three, two, one. Hey there, Fatherhood for the rest of us. I am on here with Joel Kessel. Joel Kessel is an advisor, content creator, and speaker, strategic communications, and working with media. He helps authors, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, side hustlers, and small business understand how to leverage publicity so that they can step into a bigger stage, amplify their message, and further fuel their marketing communications and lead generation efforts. He serves through professions, professionals through, serving, through speaking, personal advising, and coaching trainings and workshops, and online work programs. He provides thoughts and insights on communication strategy and working with media through his blog site at joekessel, joelkessel.com. He hosts a podcast called Conversations on Communications, where listeners gain insight and thoughts on how they can strategically and authentically communicate and deliver their message and story with clarity and confidence. Um, Joel, man, you're up to a lot. Uh, I've been on your site. I love it. It's clean. It's crisp. Uh, I've listened to your podcast, and Thanks. it's a great. It's a really, really well done. Thank um, you. What I want to start us off with, though, before we even get going, is what do you celebrate? What kind of awesome things are happening in your life today? Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me on. This is just a great honor. And uh, anything we can do you know, before we got on, just helping each other, just get, get the message out. So, you know, things that really got me excited, uh, you know, now that I, you know, what I have going on last week, I was actually down in your fine state of North Carolina. Is that right? Uh, recording content for a, a new online program. Okay. That I'm uh, partnering with someone on called Your Media Strategy. So kind of fits in with uh, everything you just read off on my bio. It's those entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners. It's really that, that niche uh, where those organizations are people, they, they can't hire uh, an agency to help them. And, and, and they shouldn't be spending their money that way, to be quite honest with you. But yet they need some guidance and direction on how can they get their important message out? How can they better connect and engage with people that they need to connect and engage with in a, in a smarter, strategic, more, you know, just better way? So I kind of fill that void right there. And through my, you know, advising and coaching and online programs, just provide those people that guidance to keep them within the guardrails to make sure they're going down the right path in the right direction, positioned the right way, and truly knowing with confidence that they are connecting with their audience, whoever that is. Right. right. So that's, that's, uh, that's been a big project. It, uh, you know, recorded it all last week and, uh, uh, the heavy lifting isn't over yet, so we're sure. still still moving forward and, and creating a lot more content around that uh, that course. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. When are you? Uh, when's that plan to be released? Well, we're looking at sometime in August or uh, October, November. So definitely before the end of the year, we wanna we wanna get everything out there and 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 do a big push before the end of the year. Awesome. And then, hey, look, and, and here's the other deal too. You are not a uh, fly by night kind of guy. You've been at this for how long? Twenty five years. Uh, 25, almost 25, man, you're making me feel old. That's yeah, all but, right. you, but you look so good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm coming up on 25 years, 17 years on my own. Okay. So for any of you, uh, you know, the guys out there listening, they're thinking about going out and, and doing this on their own. Um, yeah, you know, f f for me, uh, it was a scary, scary step for me to take. I remember back in those days, but, uh, you know, like anything, once you get out there and you start learning and growing from that in six months, you look back and say, man, why was I so worried? Yeah. You know, same, same thing happened to me after six months. I had no time to really think about, <laughs> you know, what was next. Cause I was so busy doing stuff and uh, I've, I've never looked back. So it's been a blessing. That's great. One thing that uh, is really clear in uh, to me anyways, by looking at your blog, by reviewing like everything you're, you're not, and even just our media communications, it's just how focused you are and, and what it is that you're delivering. And in one of your podcasts, uh, we're, we're going to, uh, which one was it? I think it was the 28, you know, and this is uh, probably one of my favorite episodes, right? This is the one where we talk about you, uh, 
give, give us a story about you and Orange and football and how that might come together. <laughs> Boy, you did your research, my friend. I looked around a little bit. Hey, yeah. Well, uh, I was a, uh, a football player at the Ohio State University, walked on back in the day, and I was a punter and a holder for the extra points and field goals. And this was, it was October 31st. And uh, cause this, this is weird. That's why I remember the date. We were at Iowa, scored our second touchdown, jog on out for the extra point and uh, you know, line up. And, and the deal was whenever I called the cadence, that meant the center could snap the ball whenever he was ready. It wasn't on a set count, but that meant when I was done with the cadence, he was going to snap the ball whenever. Well, as soon as I yell out the cadence, I see something coming at me out of the corner of my eye. Well, I can't look away because I'm waiting for the ball any moment here. And uh, this thing hits me in the arm, falls down. I take a quick glance. It's an orange. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, the ball comes. We get the extra point. You know, all, all is right in the world. So... Uh, it, it's funny because the viewers at home watching it on TV, they come out of a commercial break and the whole, whole camera, the whole uh, TV screen is of me from the neck down. And the announcers are saying, Hey, check this out. This is something I've never seen. And, you know, in super slow motion, they see the orange hit me in the arm and they talk about how focused <laughs> I well, was. Well, I mean, you listen, and, I mean, I think that anybody who could have been easily, you're easily distracted if somebody, <laughs> something hits you. Right. And, um, right. But, but one of the things that uh, I, I just really appreciate, uh, again, just in going through your, your – listening to your podcast and going through your blog uh, and checking some things out is, is really – I mean, you're, you're just kind of ultra-focused guy. Is this um, – you know, how does that play a part uh, in, in, in kind of who you are and what you're doing, and how does that show up? Well, I, you know, I think we absolutely have to have that clarity and focus. We have to know – where we're going, why we're going there, why we're doing what we're doing. And I believe me, Brandon, I've spent a lot of time. There was a moment six years ago, I was not focused. I was in a, in a dark place, if you will. Um, didn't have clarity, didn't have direction. I was frustrated, stressful at home and uh, met a guy by the name of Kerry Oberbrunner, um, who I'm blessed. Uh, you know, he lives here in my, in, uh, in my hometown here in central Ohio. And he became and still is my mentor and coach. And if it wasn't for him, I'm, I'm afraid to think, you know, where I, where I would be right now. But he, like everyone else that he helps, it's, it's focused on clarity. It, who are you? What do you do? Why do you matter? Why are you going where you're going? Um, and, and once you have that, that clarity then all the rest kind of falls into place. Now all of a sudden you start gaining more and more competence in your area of expertise, whatever that may be. And through that, you gain more confidence. I was lacking so much confidence six years ago. It was crazy. ex potter like you? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, but, you know, once you get out there and start doing these things with that clarity in mind, that confidence starts to build, you start taking action, then all of a sudden, you start to realize you, you are making a difference in other people's lives. You are making an impact. You're, you're influencing others. And, and what happens at the end of that equation? Right. Income. You actually get paid for doing something that you really <laughs> love to do. And, and here's the, the, the crazy part about it, and I think a lot of people get caught up in this, is they start with money. I've right. got to make money. I've got right. to make a living. And I get it. Sure. I get it. Sure. But, but that's the weird piece of that puzzle it, it's, a, it's a mind shift. Mm-hmm. And once we can set money aside and trust and have faith and knowing that it's going to be there if we truly do follow our passion and, and what really excites us. And, and for me, it's that meaningful, peop, uh, purposeful work of, of helping others get their story out in a meaningful way. Right, um, right. And I know that in the end, the money's going to be there. You... Um... I love, I love that. Uh, I love, I certainly love that message. And uh, it reminds me, uh, I, you know, I've only been on this like kind of a track myself for probably just over a year or so. Okay. Right. Of just, you know, trying to have that mind shift and um, implementing it. And it just brings to mind uh, Zig Ziglar is probably the one who I got it from was like, if you focus on uh, the quality of life, focus on the quality of your life and not so much 
all these other things. It sounds similar to what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, we're just in a day and age right now, society, our culture, it, it's tough because we're surrounded with so many distractions and so much uh, shiny object syndrome, yeah. right. so much, you know, m- money seems to be the driver. Um, right. It, it's easy to, to get pulled in all, all of these weird directions. And, it, you know, again, having that focus and that clarity really helps with making decisions quicker, better decisions, saying no more often because you know where you're going. <laughs> right, right. You know, that's a wonderful thing, saying no. <laughs> well, I want to, I mean, I would give a shout out to, uh, again, I actually had it jotted down. The episode, the two episodes that you and Carrie did were, were great. Uh, episodes Thanks. 34 and 35. Yeah. Um, and and um, I think in, in that episode, well, you, know, it's, you, sp- you split it uh, into two, but in there, uh, you both talk about the value of investing in yourself. You want to talk to that a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for asking. That is so true. You know, there's a reason when you're on an airplane, they say to put on your mask first before you help others, because you do have to value yourself. You have to take care of yourself first, because if you're not abundantly full, then you cannot give abundantly. And I'm, mm. that's, a, that's a message from Dan Miller of 48 Days to the Work You Love. So it all starts from within. Um, it starts with that clarity. It starts with your focus, where you want to go. And then, you know, it builds from there of taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually. It's all of those things working together to really um, help guide you, you know, down, down the right path, I, I, I believe. Right. right. I think, uh, and, then, and I think what, uh, one of those parts I was trying to dive into there was like the you guys spoke also just about the importance of attending those seminars. Yes. Also. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. We have to be continually learning, you know, plain and simple, whether it's listening to this podcast that in conversation you and I are having, um, reading books, going to seminars, going to conferences, uh, you know, just filling our minds with that education because it's only making ourselves more valuable to the people we're looking to serve. You know, the more I can educate myself and learn about certain things, the more marketable I become and the more value then that I can pass on to the people I'm looking to help. Because look, they don't have the expertise in the PR and the marketing and communications like I do. I, I live this stuff day in and day out and have been for almost 25 years. And I still go to those relevant conferences and, and educational events to, to, to stay on top of what's the latest, the greatest. And I then can pass it on the people who aren't living this day in and day out. Right. That's just making me so much more of value and allowing me to pass that on to other people who are really looking for that guidance and direction. Right. They're just looking for the, um, they're just looking for that nugget that you, you, you went and found for them. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right on. I love it. Um, so you have a question that you don't often have uh, asked, you know, so when you, when you set up these sessions and somebody comes to you and they're looking for help, right. Uh, and you, and you say that like uh, most of the people come to you for like a tactical versus kind of like the whole overall. Yeah. And I jotted it down. So I'm just going to pretend like, I mean, let's just pretend like um, it's you and I, and yeah. where did it go? So I'm asking you for some help. I mean, what would you, if just knowing what you know of me, what would you tell me? This is uh, as a, if I was your client, how would I clarify my message? How could you help me with my message? Well, for me, I'm going to ask you, well, who is it you're trying to help? Who, who's your audience you're trying to connect with? I would say, you know, just other, I would say on, on high level, just fathers who haven't been able to get their ass out or seats to take care of their family in a better manner. Okay. All right. So right there, a good answer because we've identified part of the problem. You know, and that's a big part of this whole equation is if you're out there working and offering a service, you're solving a problem. So we need to know what that problem is or that pain point that people are having. So it's, let, let's just say la- lazy dads, you know, <laughs> how, do, how do we motivate lazy dads, right? So that, that's a problem. All right, let me ask you this. Do you have any idea, any stats or data point that says, you know, X percent of dads in America uh, are co- couch potatoes? Anything nah, like that? No, nah, no. Nah. See, I, I definitely lacked in, in doing any, no, okay. any deep, any deep uh, stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, one of the next questions I would ask is, why? Why do you want to help other dads that are seemingly lazy? I, I, just because of the profound effect that it's had on me to step into 
my own capabilities within, within my own family and just how much greater I feel about it, right? You know, the revelation yeah. that I've had. And, and how long ago did you have this revelation? Ah, oh, geez. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, probably about a, about a year and a half ago, I realized uh, that I wasn't making any super cognizant choices of my own in my own yeah. life. But yeah, my life was good. Right. But I, but I didn't make any definite decisions to get here. Yeah. Right? I just, I just kind of showed up and I was like, what happens if I actually try? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So how, how old are your kids? Uh, they are five and seven. Perfect. Okay. Did anything happen in your childhood that sort of was, uh, you know, stuff behind you feeling this way? Well, so, I mean, I didn't have a dad. So okay. not having a dad, just, I've always wanted to be a good, great dad. And, and for me, it was real easy because the bar was set real low. Right. Like, I, yeah. So, but again, you know, once I realized that I wasn't making choices in my own life to, uh, you know, these obvious choices, uh, it was also sending a signal to these guys too. Right. Like how could, uh, this is actually, you've got in the, in the same episode, what is that? In the, in the same episode 28, the, the, um, the Carl Jung. Oh, Man. Right, right, right. Right um, between the eyes. Right. So, so when you, and, 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 uh, I didn't, I didn't find that one. And that's like the, uh, what, what is the, what is it? The like the, unfulfilled dreams of parents is like the yeah, worst thing to your kids or something like that. Yeah. The greatest, uh, now you got, now you got me drawing a blank on this one, but, well, but yeah, the most damaging thing to a child is the unlived life of a parent. Right. And so wow. I think I came across that even just earlier this year after I started the podcast and I was like, all right, now we got to take it to the next level. Right. So it's yeah. um, being, being not, not only the person that I want to be, but being the person that I kind of want my children to be Yeah, as well. So let me ask you this, because this is part of the conversation I would, I would ask is, who was your father figure growing up? I, you know, uh, there, were, there was uh, the occasional, my mom would have the occasional boyfriend, but the, the primary father figure would be uh, my grandfather. Okay. Okay. So hearing all this, there, there's a great story and a message in there that, that I'm already hearing that it, it's part of your story. You know, here, here's Brandon. He grew up without a father. And uh, as, as he grew into fatherhood, he realized that he wanted to be the best dad that he possibly could be for his children. And he knows that there's a lot of dads out there um, that maybe were raised similarly, you know, to, to Brandon. And he wants to teach them how to get off the couch, how to get motivated and how to be the best dads that they, that they can be. That's just off the top of my head, but yeah. you kind of you can kind of hear where my head is yeah, going absolutely. with this is absolutely. is helping to tell that story of well, well why why does Brandon even care about this? Well, he grew up that way. That's right. why he cares, and he doesn't he he wants you guys to be the best dad you can be. I'm sold, Joel. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Obviously, you know, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I wanted to do that first of all because uh, you put that question in one of your uh, podcasts and. I felt like what a what just a great way to kind of highlight what you're doing and plus uh, get a sneaky one in for myself. Yeah, no, I love it. Thanks. <laughs> I I love that give and take there. I I actually need to do more of that on my podcast with some of my guests. So Listen, your you. podcasts really are amazing. Uh, I, and I'm going to encourage others to go in there. I had I had another one um, underlined here uh, for the for for some of the people that you've worked with. Right, uh, I listened yeah. to the National Runaway Runaway Safe Line one, oh. which is a, a is a killer one. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about a little bit with a, you know, a little bit kind of the work that you've done with them and the story behind them. Yeah. Well, the National Runaway Safe Line, they've been around for close to 50 years right now. And their whole mission is to help runaway, homeless, and at-risk at risk youth stay safe and off the streets. Now, they started in Chicago back in, I believe it was 74, or early 70s. And there really wasn't a, a service to help kids who are on the street looking for help. And uh, so I forget the, the original name of the organization, but it was a service just in Chicago. Well, it grew from there. Then it became the national communication system for runaway homeless and at-risk youth. So it's, there, there's other hotlines, but not as robust as, as a national runaway safe line. Mm -hmm. um, I got involved with them. Gosh, this was about 15 or 16 years ago. A good friend of mine, 
was uh, the board chair and told me about it and got me involved uh, on their marketing committee. And so I started volunteering. Uh, Did I lose you? Hmm. Joel. Ugh. Back up. Hey, man. Hey, I wonder. Uh, hopefully, that recorded. It's still, it's still showing recording. So hopefully, it's all. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, all of a sudden you got froze up. You, you had a nice frozen face. So that, that's good. <laughs> I got something going for me. <laughs> yeah, I got something going for. Me, so I lost you. Oh, jeez, I lost. <laughs> Well, I was in the middle of um, kind of in the middle of talking about the National Runaway Safe Line. Yeah, so you know, I got involved with them about fifteen or so years ago. A good friend of mine was a board chair at the time, and and told me about the organization, and he recruited me to be part of the uh, marketing committee. So I uh, started volunteering in that capacity, and uh, shortly thereafter, they they lost their internal you know marketing PR person, and so I stepped in and started doing a little bit of work for them, and it just sort of grew from there okay. and gosh that's i think it's been about 14 years now um just helping that organization i tell you what you talk about meaningful work and helping them get their story out in a meaningful way i mean to me they're they're the epitome they have just a great great story to tell and the the people that they help and the stories that you hear um it's you know i i, I at times take a step back and have to thank god for the opportunity to to be able to serve in this capacity to help people like that um, because it truly is making a difference. And I can see that. So it's just an awesome organization just doing great work. It sounds, I mean, it sounds definitely sounds great. It sounds like you're deep in it and uh, the work you're yeah. doing. Um, like I said, I listened to that podcast and, and uh, just really, kind of overcame me on that one. So uh, I, I, yeah. I enjoyed that. And again, I'm just going to float it out there again. You know, people should be definitely, uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of awesome nuggets just like picking uh, picking through your podcast, right? Uh, Thanks. Definitely enjoyed the uh, definitely enjoyed what you're doing, and they are you call it conversations on communications, and and you really are they are conversations, but they they offer so much, and um, so I appreciate you doing those. Um, yeah. The other thing, so you and I met through Cardiff Hall. Yeah. And what a, what a he's so great, right? He's just, awesome. I really, yeah. I really enjoyed connecting with him and uh, he, the two of you uh, are, I mean, everybody, I enjoy all my conversations, but the two of you uh, have gone to this, this, uh, the, do you mind, I'm just going to throw it out there to get guest ready school students. Um, what, what encouraged you guys to be, to learn how to become better guests on a podcast? Yeah, you know, I, I downloaded some of that information. I haven't gone through the course entirely, okay. but you know, I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier in, in investing in ourselves. Okay. You know, we're, we're always trying to, to learn and improve how we're doing our work and who we're doing it for. And I think that's just another example. I mean, Cardiff is off the charts, all, just looking <laughs> for any opportunity to uh, prove how to do all this stuff. And uh, so, you know, yeah, it's, look, I know if I can be a better guest and I can come on a show like yours, and add a lot of value to you and your listeners, someone might be listening and that also has a podcast and, and says, man, I've got to have him on. Oh, all yeah. of a sudden, there's another opportunity for me to spread this message. Absolutely. You know? I, absolutely. And um, it's a great message. You talked about about six years ago, kind of living uh, in this dark, uh, dark place. You want to talk yeah. about kind of how you overcome being overwhelmed like that and that, how that feels? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not fun. And I think, you know, call it a midlife crisis. I don't know, but I think a lot of us get there. I hear this all the time from people. Well, I'm however old I am and I still don't know what I want to do. And it's like, yeah, you know, you kind of laugh at it, but it's a serious thing, right? <laughs> but it's real. So, it is real. It's real, man. And it stinks, but I was there <laughs> because here I am seemingly this successful guy running a virtual agency. I've got a team of people, other consultants that are working with me and, 
And, you know, on the outside, it looks great. But on the inside, I'm thinking to myself, I'm essentially just billing hours for dollars. Mm -hmm. Am I going to do this for the rest of my life? Is this sustainable? Am I really working with the people that I want to work with? Right. You know, it was a lot of what can I do to make money to, to provide for my family? And I hit that point, And it was at that point where I, where I said, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. And it was around that time when I met Carrie Oberbrenner and I heard the quote from Carl Jung, the most damaging thing to a child is the unlived life of a parent. That's Boom. Not, that's not lit fuse right there, man. You know? yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> dang, all right. Someone's t- trying to tell me something here. Sure I better enough. listen. <laughs> sure enough. And, you know, I, I went and heard Carrie speak at a local event. Um, there were about 50 people who went to this. It was a, it was a, a, a talk on leadership because he was, you know, certified with John Maxwell. And so I'm like, I work with leaders. I should probably go to this. So I go and man, he just connected with me with yeah. what he was saying. And out of 50 people, and he'll, he shares this story from time to time, out of 50 people, Two people gave him their business card, me being one of them. I was the only client that wow. he gained out of that talk. Um, and I, I think the lesson in that is, look, gang, if you're out there working on yourself, you know, working you know, for yourself, trying to get your own clients, not everyone's going to say yes. And, but you got to get out there and take action to find out who are those people that are going to say yes and that are waiting for you. I was one of those guys. I was waiting for someone like Carrie to come along and man, it just resonated. Well, absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. You got to have someone that can light your fire. That, yeah. And boy, he sure did. And he, <laughs> he pushed me. Um, it was tough. There were times of, of doubt and think, you know, when he told me that whole deeper path payoff, of clarity to competence to confidence to influence impact to income i'm sitting there looking at this whiteboard in my conference room as he's going through it and i felt overwhelmed at that whole concept and i'm thinking to myself i'm not even competent enough how am i going to get the confident i mean it's just <laughs> like what's going on but i tell you what stick with it and uh trust and follow the plan and just keep taking action right foot left foot it's not going to happen overnight right um and good things are going to happen man uh it's it's so true <laughs> well i mean that's uh so you, and and so i brought up the uh i brought up the the um i brought up nicole because uh you know she uh and i and i use this now with everybody i got it from cardiff was this uh the sheet, the host sheet, man. I, I just love it because it's not that I didn't do my yeah. research, but I also want to talk to you. You get, so you fill out the sheet and um, uh, I don't want people to think I'm cheating. I'm just looking down here at the notes. I didn't do this all myself. We did this together. Um, <laughs> but yeah. you know, yeah. so in, in the, this sounds like it's, it's part of like the getting unstuck and moving towards a life of more clarity and purpose. Um, but I feel like you're, you're helping people do that now too. So you've kind of, you've, you've already gotten there. You're living, um, a life with clarity and purpose. And now you're helping other people do that with your business. Is that right? Is that fair? Uh, I think that's fair to say, you know, for me, it's all about working with good people doing meaningful work and helping them get their story out in a meaningful way. So there's a lot of meaning behind that. And you can imagine the conversations get pretty deep because I do ask why, and I ask why a lot. Why do you want to do this? Why are you doing it that way? Why do you think that's going to work? Why these people over there, you know, and really get them to think more deeply about their meaning and purpose, because I don't want them to go through what I went through where the, the, the almighty dollar was, was, was leading me at times. I don't want them to experience that because right. I've been there, but I do want them to experience the joys and the rewards and, and all of the excitement that comes along with, with working for yourself or working within a small business. It, because look, when you do have meaning and purpose behind your work, I mean, it just makes everything so much richer and, and more, uh, more driven. It's just more meaningful. You, you know, uh, it, it gives, it gives it the meat on the bone that you're looking for, right. you know, was and, this something, was this something that, uh, this, this, this meaning, meaning and, and purpose, did this exist prior to you, 
uh, working for yourself? Were you able to have that type of feeling when you were working for another company? Uh, yes and no. Um, I, you know, my, throughout my career, well, my very first job out of school was in Chicago. I worked for a very small boutique agency. It was three people at the time. And about 75% of those clients were nonprofit. Okay. I mean, Chicago youth centers. They had eight centers in the city in the worst neighborhoods you can imagine in Chicago. I've been to some places in Chicago. Um, and to be able to see and experience, but also talk to the people that are helping those kids in those, those inner city neighborhoods. It's like, wow, how do you do that? How do you get up every morning and do that? It's, it's a larger purpose. They're not right. doing it to make money. They're doing it because they know they're making a difference, a big difference in the lives of kids that who knows where that's going to take them, you right. know? So that was just one of the experiences, you know, from there I went on to a much larger agency and worked for Ronald McDonald house charities and also worked for uh, an organization called air lifeline, which flew uh, ambulatory patients for free who huh. needed medical care far from home. And part of my job there was telling the story of the patients who were getting help from these volunteer pilots. Okay. I spent hours on the phone with patients for two and a half years when I worked on that account, hearing their story. Why, why do they need medical care? What does it mean to get free transportation from an organization like this? Brandon, holy smokes, you have some of those, uh, those conversations and, and that's why. And I think that w those experiences were sort of the foundation that just kept leading me down this path of, meaningful work. Now, back then, I didn't think of it in those terms. Sure. I didn't think of it as, oh, I'm going to save the world and do all this meaningful work. It's farthest from the truth right there. It still was, how can I get more clients? How can I get more, more work in the door? How can I make more money? You know, it, it was still that mentality. Sure. Um, but, you know, the older you get, the wiser you get. And I grew a little bit wiser. My hair got a, started turning gray in a, at a much faster rate. And uh, yeah, it was six years ago when I finally had that moment right. of what are you doing? Right. And that's when I took a really deep dive. And, and, you know, Carrie as my mentor and coach, you know, we were in a session and I kept telling him, I just feel like there's, there's more to this. Right. It's, we, you know, the, the whole meaningful, purposeful thing. And we came up with that whole phrase of meaningful work in a meaningful way. And it was just boom, like this aha moment. I'm like, right. yes, it just, you know, you talk about clarity and focus, man, you talk about clarity and focus and me saying no more often. Right. Uh, I went through a period working with a lot of startup organizations. Right. And I, I get that. Bit. I get it. You know, a lot of them are in it and, and, uh, because, well, there's, there's two types. One, they're in it because they, they, they know that they're solving a problem and improving people's lives. But there's also the other person who's only in it to make a gazillion dollars. Sure. So I can, if I'm sitting down with a startup, I know within five minutes if I'm going to work with these people or not, because I ask why, why do you do this? Right. Uh, where do you want to be in three to five years? And the ones who answer, we want to exit and make a million dollars. Boom. Red flag. I'm already checked out. No kidding. You know? So no, I can I mean, say that much that, quicker. That's awesome that you're able to, you know, working for yourself, you're able to make those decisions too. You bet. You know, and I get this from some people. When I, when I first started working on my own, um, I had some people, you know, family members even, you know, concerned. They're like, well, what are you going to do for benefits? Um, you're leaving the security of a job. And, you know, now that I've have, have all this experience, yeah, I could see where they're coming from. But one, you buy benefits, right. you know, they're yeah. out there they're, and available. And two, I feel more secure in working for myself than working for one job because tomorrow I could lose that one job and 100% of my income. Yeah. Now, working for myself, I could use a, lose a client tomorrow and lose 10% of my income. Right. I've, I still, I still have jobs. Right. Right. Plus you're never, so probably, I, you're probably never going to lay yourself off. 
No, probably not. Although my wife will say, <laughs> honey, we need to plan that vacation. I'm like, I know I'm with you. You know, well, you know well, I, that's, that's also the thing. beauty of what you do. You, uh, yeah. you know, you can, you can work from anywhere you want for the most part. Right. You know, yes. And in the line of work that I do even more, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of advising. I do, I do a lot of, you know, coaching and advisory calls, uh, you know, on, on my phone uh, or through Zoom. And I could be at my sister-in-law's place in Arizona um, having this conversation. And, and you wouldn't know that. That's okay. And that's, that's the beauty of, I think, the day and age we're in with, with technology and the digital age. And it just allows, it just gives us so much more flexibility in how we can work and, 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 and work for others. Um, but yeah, to your point, I do have the luxury of deciding who I want to work with and, and who I don't want to work with. I think that's, that's, sure. that's definitely awesome. So you've been, you've been married to, uh, Kathy here. We've got 12 years yeah. of marriage. You've got your two kids, Jenna, 10 and Cole six. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, when you first became a dad, what were some of your, your first, uh, I'm just going to, I'm not, did you like, I think there's like zero transition there for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're all good, man. Let's uh, go. but you know, the, the, I will, I will say the one thing that, I mean, you did all this, uh, you, you made the transition to working for yourself for your, uh, the, the primary, one of the primary goals of that was to be more available for your children, to be a part of your family's life. Right. Yeah. You know, I would, I would even back up even further because I started working for myself five years before we got married. Okay. You know, but as I, you know, entered that next phase of my life, um, you know, it forced me to, re you know, start thinking more and be more responsible. Yeah. The responsibility um, kicks up a notch. <laughs> yeah, man. I tell you what, and especially when, when Jenna came around, you know, that was 10 years ago. And uh, we always knew we weren't going to stay in the city of Chicago. Okay. Um, so we decided, you know what, the suburbs out there, the suburbs anywhere. Right. So we came back to central Ohio. Um, and, you know, that's what being a dad does and, and getting married. You know, uh, I, I was ready for it. Obviously, I was 35 when wow. I got married. First marriage for both of us. Nice. And uh, we're about the same age. And, uh, you know, we were ready, obviously. And ready for that next phase. And, uh, you know, you know, any dad knows, uh, any married person knows. It, it's challenging at times, you know. And it's uh, how do you work together to get through those times? I mean, whew, you're going to make me go there. Um, <laughs> you know, Kathy comes from a big family. Yeah. I, you know, she's one of six kids. I'm one of four. Uh, we envisioned a big family, but getting married as late as we did, um, it, it posed some challenges. Jenna is a blessing. She is, uh, I think a gift to let Kathy experience what it's like to be a true mom. And, uh, I just, thank God for that opportunity for her to experience that. But at the same time, it also gave us the opportunity to experience what adoption is like. Okay. So, so, um, your first, thanks you. You made me go there, right? You're, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't aware to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So your, your, your first child, which one's adopted. Jenna. No, Jenna is biological. Okay. We had, we had a hard time getting yeah. her in the first place, but she's right. biological. And uh, uh, we, you know, just had a hard time having another child. And uh, so it got to a point where we're just too stinking old and this is not going to happen. Right. But we don't want to have an only child. We don't want Jenna to, to be raised as an only child. Right. Knowing that we both came from large families, we, we wanted uh, to have a larger family. Right. And uh, boy, that was a tough conversation to have when we decided we're going to check out adoption. And uh, I think it speaks volumes about your, um, <sighs> your, your desire to be a dad. Uh, you're, you're the, uh, for us, um, we had a second one and uh, there were some difficulties in between. And 
and we make a joke out of it all the time. We, but we always say we had to have a second one because kind of like dogs, if you don't get the second one, you know, the other one's going to tear stuff up and stuff like that. They need, they need somebody to play with. Cause right. I mean, you know, um, but the other part about this, and, and I, I got to ask you a question because even though it was, it was, it was a little difficult for us. Um, I think one of the frustrating things that my wife and I see are people uh, in your situation. We've got some neighbors that are, that, that, that aren't, that are, aren't able to, I have other children. We've got other good friends that it's, it's difficult. And then you've got all of these other people out there that seem to just mm. throw this away. Um, yeah. I'm with you. I mean, it's a, to me, it just, it, it rips me apart, right? Uh, it rips me apart. Um, and so I feel, I feel for you brother. Like I know that um, it, it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be difficult, especially, you know, when, when you want them in your life. Yeah, you know, it, it was difficult, but now where we are six years later, mm-hmm. what a blessing, awesome. what a blessing. And Cole is just, I mean, we, my wife was in the delivery room. We, we met the mother, fantastic people. We, everything you read and research on about adoption was complete opposite for us. Great. We, we had, you know, just a, a young mother, uh, obviously didn't plan this and went through her process to make this very difficult decision and, and chose us. Hmm. Um, and I, I honestly think God chose us or, or Cole chose us, but uh, we, we were chosen. And um, just the whole experience, even to this day, it's an open adoption. We have uh, communication with both the mother and the father through mm-hmm. text and we share pictures. Um, they, they actually came out to central Ohio, uh, from, from the West coast to spend a weekend with us when he was about one years, uh, one year old. Wow. Um, and you know, it's just been an awesome, awesome experience that will continue to be an awesome experience as, as he continues to grow and, and get older. I mean, they sent him and Jenna, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. I mean, they're just generous, loving, awesome people. And we could not be more fortunate to have them in our lives, to be quite honest with you. Very nice. Very nice. Well, are you a familiar, uh, are you familiar with the Priest of Inquiry? It seems to be kind of big in that area anyways. Are you familiar with it? No. Okay. It seems, it, it seems like it'd be up your alley. Um, but I'm going to throw a couple of these questions out and they kind of come from this, uh, this it's an appreciative inquiry. Uh, oh line, yeah, go line of thinking, right? Um, so I'm yeah. just gonna say, you know, and I, I enjoy these because they 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 focus on the positive, awesome things going on in your life and how to continue them, right? And yeah, and the, and so I enjoy them. I, I'm gonna try them out on you. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go for it, man. Let's go with a couple. Like, what is great about your family? Let's just yeah, what is great uh, about together? We love being together. We're starting to work on a family mission statement. It's not written out yet, but we've. We've asked ourselves some questions as a family and we've zeroed in on, we love being together and we love being together with our, our neighbors in our community. Um, a, a few years ago, our house was dubbed the Kool-Aid house because all the kids are hanging out at our house because nice. we're just, we love that. And I think that's part of being from bigger, bigger families. You know, sure. you just embrace that chaos at times. <laughs> nice, nice. I love, that. So we, I love that. We love being together. What, what inspired uh, that, you know, what, what inspired the mission statement? Um, a mastermind group that I'm part of with a, another group of guys. And we believe that it's not about your work, but it's really, it starts from within and it starts within your home. It starts with, with, with God, your spouse and your family. And, and it just ripples out and cascades from there. Because if you're, happy in your home and you're intentional about how you're living your life, the work is going to fall into place. All those other things are going to fall into place. Now I say that very nonchalantly, there's work that is involved, but it, I, I believe it just makes it a little bit, it helps you be more focused on what matters. I you couldn't know, agree. That, I couldn't agree more. Day, yeah. At the end of the day, it's your family, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. Uh, I, I know that um, that's actually kind of an, uh, one of the other angles that I load into the whole fatherhood for the rest of us. If you're successful at home with your family and your loved ones, yes. that makes stepping out into whatever it is. You're, if you're the hero, when you walk out the door, there's a good chance you could be the hero wherever you walk into. Right. Right. Amen. Uh, you're right. So I, I love it. And, and it just, it, 
It sounds right, right. Uh, are you able, is that is that a mastermind group that's open to anybody? Is that something that you're able to share with others or is that just kind of something else on the side? That's something else on the side. I'm not the leader of that particular group, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it's a gentleman. Uh, you know, all of us have very, very similar morals, values, faith, you know, all that stuff. And I tell you what, we, we, we get into some stuff. We're vulnerable and that's where the growth happens. And it's just an awesome group. There's a lot of trust. And believe me, there's got to be a lot of trust with, with a group like this. And I, and I think that goes back to investing in yourself. Um, right. You know, by me being part of that group, they're pushing me. I'm trying to push them at the same time to really be our best selves. And like you say, you know, um, it starts at home. Uh, right. You know, if I can be a better dad, better husband at home, it's going to make... Uh, for a, a, a very happy life in Absolutely. the long run. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, what do you want more of for your family? Memories. You know, we're in this, this period, I believe, where it is chaotic with just two kids. Crafts, like you wouldn't believe, glitter all over the house. <laughs> you, can very easily, you can very easily get upset, but I keep reminding myself, you know what? There's going to be a day in my life where I wish I saw glitter on the floor. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to, I want to, I want to take advantage of these moments <laughs> and create memories, be together. Right? Right, right. I mean, before I jumped on this call, I was out in the driveway with my son playing trains. You know, he wants to build a track and make it cool and build bridges and all nice, that nice. memories, being together and doing things. If I could have more moments like that, if I didn't have to work and just do that, <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be cool. You know, absolutely. You know, I, I'm going to step back for a second, and even go deeper there because about three years ago, I intentionally made the decision. I'm going to work from home. 100%. I was right. renting space closer okay. to downtown, but the whole reason was I want my kids to know who dad is. Right. I don't want them to know this guy that's only around before nine and after five right. Cole comes home, you know, from kindergarten at noon, I make him lunch. I sit down. Hey, What'd you learn at school today? That's awesome. And is he, does he appreciate it now? He has no, no clue. Not at all. <laughs> but there will be a day. <laughs> there's going to be a day when he's going to realize right. talking with other guys that, oh my gosh, my dad was around a lot, right. you know, yeah. unlike some other, other dudes, but you know, so more memories. If I more could have memories. those opportunities. I like yeah. that. I like that. Um, speaking of like, you know, uh, living out the dreams, right? How are you uh, in the Carl, the Carl Young thing? So how do you feel like you're living out your dream? Just trying to lead by example for my family, you know, um, you know, Kathy knows a lot of the struggles that we have, uh, business related, personal related, and, you know, um, we're going to come through these. We always do. And just, knowing that we're going to grow stronger, um, there's going to be a lot of pride in that and a lot of satisfaction and, and sort of that, that no regret mentality. Right. Um, so there will be a day when we look back and be like, you know what? We did stay true to ourselves. We did live a, a dream that was our dream. It doesn't, it's not anybody else's dream, yeah. but it's how we wanted to live life on our terms with our family. And, you know, do it the best way that, that we could possibly do it. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, now what about, so you said you came from a big family. What, what was your relationship like with your dad? What kind of dad did you have in your life? Hey, still, man, he's 85 and kicking, man. He is yeah. awesome. Um, I tell you what, he is, you know, you have a great dad when you're out in public somewhere and they say, oh, you're, you're John Kessel's son. I'm like, yeah. Man, he is a great guy. He's one of my favorite guys. And That's you great. know you got a great dad, you know? And that happens all the time when I go back home. And, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, got an event coming up in uh, October with my, uh, with my high school. And uh, uh, I've invited my dad to, to come along and, and be part of that weekend. Well, you know, both my parents, but they, they have a golf outing. And, you know, my dad doesn't golf anymore, but it's, it's an opportunity to be together with, with my brothers and my dad. And he's like, absolutely sign me up. That's great. You know, we talk about memories, right? You know, he's still creating memories, That's awesome. you know, for his, his kids. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, he's just a great, um, 
how do I say it? Supportive, genuine, giving, uh, loving person. And uh, I just hope that I'm doing the same thing for my kids. That's great. You don't hear too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear a lot more. Uh, <laughs> what's funny is like m- the more I seek these stories out, the more I hear better ones. Uh, and so, <laughs> so that, that, that's cool. I, I really, I really enjoy hearing, hearing that. Um, and, and it sounds to me like you're, you're trying to emulate a lot of what he did. What is like one or two things that he did while you were growing up that you're trying to emulate too? Yeah, I think being around, he was always supportive, always at our events, always. Uh, even if it meant he had to leave work early. Little League baseball game. How boring can some of those things be, right? Pretty boring. <laughs> Pretty boring. But he's always there. Right. You know, always supportive. Um, always supportive in what we wanted to try and, and do. You know, never tried to steer us away from something. You know, look, Brandon, I was in speech and theater in high school. Right. I mean, how many, how many athletes do that? And he was like, not not many, not many. (laughs) Right. Right. But you know, I I think my high school is a little unique in that regard where there were a lot of athletes who got involved with, with the arts and stuff. But um, you know, he wasn't one of those guys. He was just like, live life, man, do what you want to do. And uh, he just allowed me and, and my siblings to just have those experiences to, to, to live and grow, you know? And you feel like that's something that you're doing as well. You're allowing your children to kind of grow without, without too much of a, a, a guiding, over, over, overtly guiding hand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and Kathy and I talk about this a lot. Uh, we, we want to support our kids in their passions, whatever they are, and at, at whatever moment they are, you know, in their life. Jenna loves to dance. Mm-hmm. She's in choir. She's in the church choir. She's in a, another children's choir here locally. She's taken piano. She loves that. She loves the arts, and we're all for that. And and Cole, on the other hand, loves sports. Right. You know, but this is interesting. I grew up in Northeast Ohio. People are crazy there about their football and about their sports in general. I mean, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is up there where I grew up. She's pretty pretty adamant. She doesn't want Cole playing football. Huh. And you know what? Knowing where the sport is today and how violent it has become. It's a very, very different game that, that uh, from when I grew up, I, I'm okay with that. Right. Um, but at the same time, I think there's going to be a time where Cole may <laughs> be interested in football. Right. We'll cross that bridge and have a conversation about that, but we're, we're going to make a decision and talk about it together as a family. Sure. And what we feel is best. Yeah. I mean, you look at those guys now, it's like you've got, You've got trains running at each other. It's not just it's Whew. not just a couple not just a couple scrawny dudes in the backyard throwing a ball around. You are you're getting hit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Hit. Getting so we'll hit. see. We'll see. But yeah, we're all, you know, supportive of whatever they want to do, you know, and it's just fun seeing the joy that they have with it. That's cool. And I mean, we're talking about it now, but let's, I mean, just shine a light on a little bit more. It sounds like you and Kathy have a a really nice synergy. Let's just talk about how important it is. Try to get on the same page, even though it doesn't always happen. I need to do a better job, Brandon, you know, uh, communication. It's, it's funny because she jokes, she jokes with me sometimes. She's like, Joel, just talk to me. You're in communications. It's what you do, you know, very sarcastically. And I'm like, honey, I know I have no comeback there. You know, it's just not what I do with you. Right. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if there's anything, it's just communication is at the core. It's so critically important. And, uh, you know, that, that's something I, I can work and, and do a better job of. But, but yeah, when we're on the same page, we're, we are on the same page and it's so, so important. Um, you know, just trying to take some time away from the kids and, and, and uh, recharge and, and have some time to ourselves uh, right. is really important. Um, and, you know, going back to that reference of you got to take care of yourself first, you have to, I believe you have to take care of your marriage first. Yeah. Because if you take care of your marriage and your relationship, you're going to be a better parent. Yeah, that's just, a, just by default. It's a, it's a, it's one that I feel like I'm learning more on this side. And it's funny because you, you always feel like the focus should be on the children, on the children, on the children. And then, right. you know, then, then you kind of lose focus of your relationship and then, then you guys aren't communicating and then, you know, <laughs> you gotta have that conversation. But I, I, I found that I, and I agree with you that the more you focus on the relationship and, and kind of working with each other, the more, the better the whole, the whole thing's working out. Absolutely. 
be abundantly full before you can give abundantly. I love so that. true. Where are you hearing that one? Where's that line from? Uh, Dan Miller, uh, Dan 48 Miller. Days to the Work You Love. Dan it's uh, I don't know if that's his exact phrasing, but uh, that that's the message that he's communicating. I, I love it. I love yeah. it. I, I want to ask you, uh, what what is the like most important thing you've learned about yourself probably since uh, deciding to work from home? It's not all about me. It is not about me, period. You know? Right. Um, yeah, I guess it goes back to that mind shift in, in really having a servant mentality. Hmm. And that, that's, you know, serving my wife, serving my kids, serving my community, serving my clients and the people that I work with and just having that giving mentality. Um, it, uh, that's a mind shift that I had to really fight through mm -hmm. to, to really wrap my brain around it. And I'm on the other side of that and Holy smokes, it is a, it's a great thing. Um, I'll give you a quick example. About two months ago, I had a, a new client call, a potential new client call. And it was with a, an owner of a company and the marketing director. And uh, we started talking and about 15 minutes into the conversation, um, I realized, you know what? You don't need me. You need, you know, a digital marketing agency that's going to do what you're looking to accomplish. Right. And boom, all of a sudden, the tone and the dynamic of the conversation just went a whole different direction. You talk about gaining trust. Right. I gained a ton of trust in a matter of five seconds right there. Right. And fast forward to today, they're a client. Nice. I'm advising and coaching that marketing director on how to get their story out through the media and coaching them on how that wraps into their overarching marketing communications. Um, I didn't expect that to happen. I was just going in saying, how can I help these people? Right. And that's the direction that it, that it, that it went. Now, would you I say that, this was that, did that shift come uh, while working with Carrie? Uh, or where do, you, where, do you feel like, where do you feel like you, you started on this uh, the servant mentality? Yeah, it started with Carrie and it continued with other conversations I had, you know, with other friends and colleagues, you know, um, don't think about the money. Think about what is in the best interest of the client. You how know, long, how long does that, how long does that take to sink in? Into, like, I, I listen and, and not for nothing. Right. So I'm with yeah. you. And, and uh, uh, you know, I would have to say again that, you know, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the uphill part of that journey, I guess, or somewhere I'm looking yeah. for the tunnel on the mountain right now, but um, you know, the, it's tough. I think it took me a good two years to really have it sink in, but I think it's one of those things, and this is where clarity it comes back into play, is you're always fighting against it because it's always right there. The temptation is always there. The money is always right there. Yeah, I could do that. Oh, but wait a minute. That's not my core focus. That's right. not how I, I decided I want to serve other people. Right. So it's easy to go after that opportunity but I know in the long run, it's not going to be fruitful, you know, in, in my mind. And uh, so it's easier for me to say no to some of those things. I appreciate that. And, and that's something else that I think that just, it, it really does shine through. Uh, like I said, I listen to many of your podcasts and it really does shine through in your work. Um, Thanks. You, you, you being true to yourself, who you are and, and your focus. Um, Thanks. I can't, yeah, you know, I'm just a fan, Dave. What do you want from me? Um, <laughs> well, hey, man, I love the work you're doing because the whole fatherly <laughs> thing, you talk about a day and age where your message and, and guys like you are so needed. Boom, we are right there. And, uh, you know, kids need a father figure in their life. And uh, so I just love the work you're doing as well. I appreciate that, man. There's uh, and uh, to me, there's there's so many resources out there that uh, it's just amazing. You know, trying to assemble them all in the right manner, yada yada yada. But I think the other part of it too, on the other side of that, is you need somebody uh, similar to how Carrie kind of ignited you, similar to how also like you, um, you know, you're you're able to tell somebody, hey, you want to work with me? Maybe, maybe not. You need to go work with this person, right? So having the right person and people to work with to get you to where you want to be is, is the end result there. Um, Absolutely. Two, two more. And I'm gonna let you go. I know you got, you got some time and uh, yeah, we're good. 
the I went and you've got a reading list. You've only got five books on your reading list on your on your on your website, and I can guarantee that you've read more than five books. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, what is like uh, if if you've got one that you would reference to for parenting more often than not, or do you have one that you gifted more than any of the others? Wow, I'd say gifted. That's a great one. I mean, I'm look. I've got a stack of books you know, on my, on my uh, shelf right here, I'm looking at one, the one thing there's essentialism. I would say essentialism is probably the one that I've gifted the most because I think it's not just a business book, but I think it's also a life book okay. where um, it's what is absolutely essential for you to live the life that you want and to live uh, with freedom to make choices, the right choices, um, to be a great parent, a great husband, a, a great person, uh, to be a great, uh, you know, for, for me, uh, a businessman who's, who's here to help other people. What's absolutely essential because you know, we're always being tempted and sidetracked with that shiny object syndrome. You don't need 99% of that stuff. What it's so, is, it's so shiny. Yeah. It, yeah. But it's right there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's that whole less is more, simple is better, white space is good, essentialism mentality that applies to our work and our life, um, whether it's in the home or out of the home. Um, it's just a tremendous message in that book right there that, uh, yeah, I will reread that one before any other book right now. A uh, quick question for you. I don't, I've never asked this one. Um, I've got, yeah, you know, I've got plenty of books that are just kind of, they're starting to stack up. Right. And there's one or two that I'm afraid to read because of where they might lead me. Do you have any of those laying around? Oh, you know, that's interesting. I've never been asked that. I've never thought of it that way. I think my challenge and I'm hearing this more and more is it doesn't matter how many books we read, but it's how deep we can go into the books that we do read. So you know, one of the things I want to, I, I do want to sit, I want to reread essentialism, reread the one thing, uh, triggers, um, you know, 48 days to the work you love, you know, just get a handful of books that I want to reread over and over again, because it's just like watching a movie. There's right. always things that you pick up the next time around, or it might be a year later or five years later, your, your mind is in a different place. Oh yeah. You've grown from the last last time you read it the, the first time or the second time around, you're going to pick up and look at things through a different lens Absolutely. all of a sudden. So we can always be learning from those, those books, whatever they are. So, you know, that, that's something I've been trying to, to, to pick up on and relay to others. We don't have to be reading 70 books in a year. <laughs> Five, reread them, Re go deep with them, Re you them. know? I hear you. No, no, you're, you're right. Uh, I agree. Um, I'm kind of on, like I said, though, this is, this is all pretty new to me, right? Uh, so just picking up and being in the personal development space. And so um, I liken myself to uh, Neo in the Matrix where he gets plugged yeah. in the back there and like, you know, I'm just, I'm just jamming my head full of information right now. I'm, yeah. hoping, to, I'm hoping to make some type of beautiful soup. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? There, there's going to be a moment in time where you're jamming your head with all this content, there, there's got to be a time where you say, okay, stop. Now I've got to focus on creating right. and creating because people are waiting for you. And you're doing, doing this with the podcast, but what else can you create and how else can you get that message to other guys who need to be hearing this? No, I'm, I'm with you and I agree and I, I enjoy that. And that was actually something else that came out on the Carrie Overbrunner podcast that you guys did where he just talks about consuming, uh, you know, just uh, yeah. consuming to consume. And I get that. Uh, but, you know, but it should be more to consume because you've already got the question lined up and say, all right, this is what I'm going at. At least to do, do a focused consumption, I guess, yeah. if you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I struggled with, do I go back and get my MBA? This is years ago. Right. And I sat down with, with, uh, with someone and, and they said, you already have it. Right. You've been working for yourself for 10 years. You already have your MBA. You just don't know it. Right. You know? And it goes back to, there's only one you, you bring a unique perspective to the table. And, uh, you know, I think it's easy, you know, look, there's guys doing what you're doing out there, 
but they have a unique perspective and a different background that they're bringing to the table as well. Absolutely. We need more guys like you. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't get hung up if you're listening to this and, you know, don't get hung up on, well, someone's already doing that or someone's already made that, that product. No, it's validation that, that, that there's a need out there for what you have. You bring a unique and different perspective to the table and uh, you're, you're there to bless other people. I, 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 you know, I'm just going to add on to that, Joel. Um, just the one thing that I would encourage anybody looking to get into anything like this, similar, mm-hmm. don't look at anybody else. Start taking the steps. Yes. Just, just do what you believe it is you should be doing. Start doing it. Yeah. Take action. That's, I mean, that, that's because I mean, that's kind of what I, I decided on this, this, this space and area. And I knew that if I went and I started to look at other people and others, I, w- I would slow myself down. I would be intimidated. Yeah. And instead of doing that, I just started, I just started talking to the microphone. I mean, I just went, I just went for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I couldn't be happier that I've done it. So uh, I just wanted to add on to what you said, which was awesome as well. Absolutely. Um, and then finally, I'm going to close it down with, uh, in 10 years, your children write you a letter. What would you like that letter to say? Oh, wow. You're going to do it to me again, aren't you? That's awesome. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Twofer. Yeah. You know what? I just want them to obviously thank you and be genuinely grateful and appreciative of having a dad who always listened, was there to support them and and whatever, um, encouraged them, uh, allowed them to fail in order to grow, uh, you know, and just was always there, was, you know, there to listen and and provide the right guidance in, in, uh, in the right way, whatever right way means to you, you know? Right. Right. Right on. Right on. Let's, uh, let's, let's tell everybody where you're at. Where can we, where can we find you online? Yeah, go to KesselCommunications.com. And from there, you can find a link to my blog site, which is JoelKessel.com. Or you can just go straight to the blog at JoelKessel.com. That's where you can find all of my, uh, my posts and uh, the podcast conversations on communications and uh, other, other stuff just to help guide you down this path of getting your story out in a meaningful way. And is there anything in particular? I know that at one point you were working on, is it the 30 days? Uh, any, any special shout outs to some stuff that, that people should be looking for? Yeah. You know, if you're an author and you're looking to get publicity and awareness around your book um, uh, here this fall, I'm going to open that course up again. It's called 30 days to a bigger stage. And again, it's all around how authors can get more awareness and publicity around their book. Uh, I also have uh, uh, an ebook um, that's called the uh, Professional Writers Press Kit, and again, that right now it's for authors. But we're, you know, like you said, take action and learn and grow from that. We're in the process of revising that program so it does talk to authors, entrepreneurs, and small businesses. Uh, you know, press kits I believe are a valuable, valuable tool to have. Uh, for your marketing and PR efforts, if you're looking to get more awareness and you look at media as you know, part of your strategy, um, having a press kit is really going to help you uh, get in a better, better position to amplify your message. So that is professionalwriterspresskit.com. Awesome, Joel. All right, man. Thanks for hopping on today. It's been, it's been, it's been a pleasure, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Love what you're doing. And uh, we're going to stay in touch. I know, I know that for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely, Joel.